Hi, everybody. It's Tuesday, January 19th, 2020. I'm on 29th and Fremont Avenue in North Minneapolis. This is St. Olaf School, built in 1960. I'm going to go around the corner now, and uh, I'll show you the church. And Yolanda is with me, and she's going to hold the camera across the street because it's just too close. I'm just too close if I hold the camera. So here's the school, and this is the west side. Isn't that beautiful? Those are bricks that are just mason right into the side of the building. It's part of the building wall. Isn't that pretty? And here's the south entrance of the school. And this is the beginning of the church, and now I'm too close, so uh, I'm going to get Yolanda on the sidewalk here, and I'll... Uh, here I am on the south side of the building. I showed you where the entrance was. This is an addition put onto the building in 1922. You can see where the bricks are different. They couldn't match the bricks. So this addition was put onto the church building in 1922. And here's the original church building. Yolanda, can you see the whole church? Can you see the building and the steeple? And this is the building that has the steam heating system I'm going to talk about. It was requested by somebody. This church is on 29th and Emerson Avenue North in Minneapolis. So, okay, we're going to go around to the front of the church now. You can stop the camera, Yolanda. It's cold in Minneapolis today. It's 13 degrees. Here's the front of St. Olaf Lutheran Church. And I'm still not back far enough, but you can get a picture of the building. This building was put up in 1906. It's 13 degrees in Minneapolis. It's 4 p.m. And this is about as much tolerance as I have for the cold. We begin our journey through the heating system by starting with city water, which comes into the boiler through this feed pipe and through these automatic controls into the boiler, where we see we maintain a water level that's about this point. So from this point down is water, from this point above is steam. These, this sight glass tells us where the water is located in the boiler. All boilers, all steam boilers, have to have this gauge glass. And these three test, this, this system has two test cocks so that we can either see this or if this glass gets broken, we can test to see that water comes out of this one and steam comes out of this one. This system stops the burner in the event that water does not replace, is not replaced, and the water level gets too low, it'll cut the burner off for safety's sake. These three controls tell us how much steam pressure we're going to maintain in the boiler. So let's go over here and see. Five is about the, this is about what most boiler systems run, five pounds. Uh, this tells us that there's five pounds of pressure. This burner will start running. This is a gas burner. This burner will start running when the steam pressure gets down around two or three. This thermometer here tells us the temperature of the heat or the combustion gas going up the chimney. This is the pipe to the chimney. This is the combustion gas leaving the burner into the chimney. Over here is a hot water conversion system. Steam from the boiler comes into this bundle of tubes. There's a bundle of 200 tubes in here that transfers the steam into hot water. The hot water system is what feeds this school building. 
The school building has hydronic heating system. It's hot water to baseboard radiators or to fan units. Steam now, however, goes over to the church through this pipe here. This pipe here takes steam over to the church. When the school was built, this boiler was installed with a capacity to provide steam for the church and hot water for the school building. This was a very great idea at one time. Well, now here we are deep in the bowels of the church building. And here is where the steam is coming in. Remember we climbed the stairs? So that pipe that you saw over my head is now this pipe here. And this is the steam pipe that's coming into the church. We are in the basement of the church building now. This is where the boiler room, this is where the boiler was once. And we see here that zones have been installed. These valves now let steam into certain areas of the church building. For instance, here's the steam line to the radiators in the basement. And this is a control from a thermostat in the basement. Over here we see another zone, the nave and the choir. These also have thermostats in those areas of the building. Any steam line now has to have a way for condensate for water that's cooled off as it's traveled through the pipes. So now some steam and some water comes to this trap that separates the steam from the water. And when the water fills this trap up, it dumps into a pipe that is a return line. Now I'm going to show you the old boiler room floor. This is really weird. This is a new floor we're standing on now. The original boiler room floor is down here. And here is a brand new condensate pump. All that water from the condensed steam, from the condensed steam in the pipes and the condensed steam in the radiators comes back to this point and this pumps the water back to the boiler. Now, Pastor Dale is standing by the room that contains the organ blower. You see, we build a plywood enclosure around the organ fan motor in order to keep it quiet. We don't want noise getting into the church when the organ motor is running. And this is some of the little notes that Pastor Dale has put up here to remind people how to serve us. Now, if you don't think God made man clever and woman, look at this. There is a circuit breaker on the other side of this wall. And Pastor Dale, instead of climbing over boards and junk to get into this, he has placed a pool cue here. This is the base of a pool cue. Uh, from, was this one of your uh, past? Were you a pool shark in the past? <laughs> no. The worry was that the circuit breakers on the other side of the motor here, on the inside of here, and that my vestments would get caught in the motor when I'm trying to put the motor back, circuit breaker back Oh, on. you hide your so, vestments in the blower room. Yeah, it, uh, it, it nearly happened a couple times. Okay, so if that breaks, then all he has to do is just push on this and it resets the circuit breaker. Well, I'll tell you what, Pastor. I never thought I'd learn how to use pool cues from a minister. So, <laughs> we're gonna get out of here quickly. We're walking through the halls of the basement. Remember, we're in the new part of the building. This is the part of the building that was put up in 1922. And by the way, that boiler room 
was installed in the new addition until 1922. This old church building had stoves and water heaters for warmth. When this addition was put on, the church contracted for a steam heating system. So here in 2021, we are talking about a steam heating system that was planned and the system was to be installed in the sub-basement of the new addition. Now we're going to walk through and you can see this wall, this two foot thick wall is the outside wall of the old church. This is the outside wall and this is the inside. We are now in the original church building. And as we walk through, I want to show you that every area of the building had heat. And this is, this is how radiators were put in to keep them above the steam. Steam comes into the radiator. As it travels through the radiator, it rises up and gets all of these fins. These are cast iron radiators that all of these fins are squeezed together. These are not threaded. These are squeezed together like this. And then there are bolts to hold them that way. So as the steam comes through the radiators and condenses into water, it comes into this point, which is a steam trap. There's a thermostat bellows in here that when steam gets to this point, that bellows closes and shuts off any circulation through here. The reason for that is we don't want steam passing into the water lines. That's wasting energy. When this radiator is fully hot, we don't want any more steam. So this thermostat closes with the temperature of the steam. As this radiator cools down, this little bellows in here will open and let that condensed steam, that water, flow back down here and eventually get back to the boiler. As more steam comes in and pushes the water out, this will get hot again from the steam and close again. And that cycle continues on and on as long as steam is coming into the radiator. When the room gets warm enough, that thermostat I showed you will close those valves and cut off the steam supply. So, okay, now let's walk into the basement, Pastor Dale. And we'll follow the steam line. Here is the main steam line, and here's a secondary steam line. Now remember, we had zones. So we have two steam lines. The smaller steam line is feeding these basement radiators. If you want to scan the room, you can see the radiators on the wall. So this second steam line is run off of a thermostat. This other line goes up through the floor to radiators in the sanctuary. And again, steam is coming down into the radiator. It's rising up, getting all the fins hot. When it gets to the end, when the steam reaches this point, this will close off and no more steam can get into the radiator until it cools down, turns to water, then this will open up and let the water go back to the boiler. Okay, down here, toward the end of the steam run, now since we've covered quite a few feet of distance, some of that hot steam has turned to water. Now, if you'll notice, the steam main lines are tilted down. The reason they're tilted down is as the steam travels through the line, some of it cools off and turns to water. If we try to push steam through water, we get what's called hammering, that banging. Some of you may be familiar with banging radiators. So that water comes into this trap, Remember now, there are two steam lines, one for the basement, one for the church, sanctuary. When that gets to this point, here again, when steam reaches this point, it will stop. This trap will stop the steam from going into the water line. When it cools down enough, it'll let the water out, and these pipes now take the water back to the boiler. 
Here's the main steam line, same setup. This is the basement steam line, this is the sanctuary steam line. Same setup, stops the steam from getting into the water line back to the boiler. Okay, now, again, I wanna point out, steam lines are tilted down. If you find a place where the steam pipes are tilted up, it's an installation that's been done correctly. And what's gonna happen when steam lines are tilted up, water strikes the steam, the steam bursts through, and that's when you hear this big loud banging in pipes in an old building. Okay, now we follow that steam line around and we find the creativity. Creativity, God created us to be smart. And in 1923, as a modification of the steam heating system, this air handling unit was created. They were called univets. Can you see that here? And what this is, is a unit that can take fresh air in. These controls operate damper that will let fresh air in. There's a fan in here that blows heat through a coil. There's a steam coil in here. And here again, here's Here's the condensate coming back into a trap and water going back to, and there's a fan in here that blows fresh outside air into this room. This was a great creation when people became health conscious, when hundreds of people assembled in a room with no fresh air can create a problem, not unlike our current COVID problem. So. This fresh air vent can be opened when there's a crowd in the room to allow fresh air in to heat fresh air. Okay, there's another lever up in here which may not be visible that will close a damper redirecting the air from the steam coil around it so you can just blow in fresh air from outside without heating it. So these were installed just about a year after the steam heating system was installed. Now this building was put up in 1906. Can you imagine, think back to 1906, when those people were sitting in a room, men, the church council said, we have to stop meeting in houses. Our congregation is too big. So we want to build a church. Can you imagine People being asked, donate money to build a new church. All of those people from the 20s who were born in the 1880s, 1890s, new Norwegian immigrants into North Minneapolis, dug up money and built this church. So now, follow me, and we'll follow that steam line now these are called loops. It's called a loop because it goes all the way around and ends up with water going back to the boiler. So that pipe fed that, and now here is another unit vent. The same will feel that cold air coming in from the, from the uh, front doors. So this is the same setup. Steam comes in, heats fresh air. Okay, now we follow, and here we come to the end of this loop, and what do we see? At the end of this steam run, again, traps to catch the water that has come from the steam cooling off as it travels through these pipes. This insulation is only just so good. And now look again, if you can get a look, you can see, see how the steam pipes travel down? These are lines that come from the boiler room also that feed the radiators on that side of the room. Okay, so you can stop that now, Pastor Dale, and we'll go up. Now we are going to go into the sanctuary, and we're going to burst in and follow me. Follow me. And here we are. Look at this. Look at this beautiful old church. This building was put up in 1906, and I know I'm going to have to stay close to the camera now. Uh, by the way, I spent two days getting wireless microphones set up for this, 
and uh, tried them 14 dozen times, and each of the 14 dozen times, they worked perfectly. When I got here today, only one worked. So I've decided to just abandon any conversations with Pastor Dale and concentrate on the business at hand. So here we are. Look over this beautiful church. This was put up in 1906. Now the addition to the church was back there by where that curtain was. Okay, now in 1926, as church membership increased, this light is moving, isn't it? Okay. There. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to show this balcony. As, as church membership, uh, go ahead and show the balcony. I need to stay close to the camera to keep the echo down. As church membership increased, the need for more seating capacity came about. So the church council in 1923, as long as the addition was being put on, and as long as we're getting a new heating system and we're spending money like drunken sailors, let's install a balcony. What's another $30,000? Now these people struggled. These old Norwegians in this neighborhood were not loaded with money just as we are not now, but they took everything they could except food off of the table to pay to have this work done. And thank God there were contractors that gave the churches a good price so that they could get this work done. So this balcony was added about the same time as the heating system. Okay, now let's look at the heating system. And here again, this great discovery of Univents. A hole is cut in the outside wall and fresh air is drawn in and fans will blow air up into the room, heated air up into the room. Okay, now since this system was installed after the building was put up, you'll notice that all the piping is exposed. Remember that line that came up through the floor? Here it is here. Steam goes in, condensate comes back. After a while, People got the idea the radiators were ugly. So what did they do? They built these cabinets. But look what's inside the cabinet. A big old cast iron radiator. Notice the beautiful casting. Notice all the embossing. These radiators were intended to look good, and they did. And remember, all these sections are pushed together and held together by rods. So. The church council decided to spend money hiding the radiators, which also hit a lot of heat. And I'll give you a demonstration of that. Do you want to step up here and look at this and put your hands here, or put, kind of put your hands here, kind of get a feel of that. All right, now, instead put your hand here and get a, see how much heat these things block? But they look pretty, don't they? Or at least somebody said they look pretty. Let's step back here, Pastor, and get a look at one of these beautiful stained glass windows. Aren't these windows beautiful? Now, these windows were paid for by parishioners who dedicated this window and several other windows have little dedication plaques if you want to zero on the, in on that and show that this window was paid for by parishioners who donated their hard-earned money. Think about it. That, that person was alive like we are now in 1906 when this window was created and installed in this building. Okay, now, 
certain people decided that they could cut down on expenses if they got rid of some radiators. So look at here. For all the world, you would think this was a radiator. But it isn't. And here is one here. These old buildings had lots of little closets. People back in those days are not much different than they are today. We need a lot of place to hide stuff. Once upon a time, people climbed the front steps and came into these big front doors. These are no longer used. There's a big stairway, as you saw in my opening video. And here is how this room was kept along. Here's a radiator sitting here all by itself. And right above us are two radiators that kept the balcony warm. Okay, now we look in here, this big door, and here's a stairway to the balcony. You didn't have to enter the sanctuary. You could scoot in the front door and right up the balcony before anybody saw you. In case you were embarrassed to be seen in church. I mean, you were seen in some saloon last night, and now you don't want those same people you were drinking and shooting pool with last night, you don't want them to see you here in church on Sunday morning now, do you? Okay, Pastor, let's go in. And uh, again, more radiators along the side of the building. Now, this is the north side of the building. So you see, instead of three radiators, we have four. One of them being a unibase. Upstairs, getting behind the fuse are radiators. And back in the little area, here's a radiator here. Here's a radiator here. And now we're in the new part of the building again, put up in 1922. And here's the community hall and the community room. And yes, one radiator. This room is right above the old boiler room. And there's so much heat from no steam pipes traveling through here. This floor is about 110 degrees from the heat escaping from the steam pipes. So only one radiator hidden is present. Now those covers reduce the heating capacity of a radiator by about 50%. Half of the heat never leaves the radiator. It just can't circulate through all of that paneling. There's no fan to force it. So there you have it. That's our six where we what that what we are we going upstairs? Good. Okay. Pastor Dale wants to show us something upstairs. So here we go. I hope you can hear me. I uh, I can't always stay that close to the camera. So this is uh, the room above the community room, the old choir room okay. that we're going up to. And we're going there because it has heat as well, which you have worked on. Okay, by the and way, the heat here, I want to show you the difference now between north and south. This is, this now we're in the school building. We're actually in the transition area between the church and the school. And this is the size of this. Now this is hot water. This is part of the hydronic system. You see the size of that unit? Now on the north wall, it's twice as much unit because the north wall is twice as cold. Heat escapes through all these windows, but here on the south side, we're out of the wind and frequently in the sun, so we don't need as much on this side of the room. Okay, now, Pastor's gonna lead us to the, by the way, oh, come over here, Pastor. Come on. Here's, here's the original back of the church. This is the back wall of the church before the school building was put up. 
That was once a rose window. That, that arch there, that was once a rose window, the back of the new church addition. Okay, now we'll see your room. And you can describe what's happening here. Oh well, yes, I did mention the custodian's apartment. Uh, when we were outside, so we saw that from outside. And that is the water heat. Yes, that's part of the hydronic system. We don't know why they strung that there. There used to be radiators in that part of the... And this is the music director. Uh, Once upon a time, when the membership was up in the hundreds, this room was very busy. Now, it's Kind of a place to collect things. Well, it's a computer lab. Oh yes, here's a computer lab. This is the, this is the area of the room that's being used for computers. There's a lot of youth education programs going on. Here we can see a thermostat that controls this area of the building. Yeah, that's the choir room thermostat. And that also controls the heat for the fellowship room downstairs. And again, radiators. So, is there anything else you'd like to show us? This kind of winds up for me. Uh, I would like everybody to uh, leave comments. Like a thumb up. Pastor Dale would like a thumbs up too. I'm going to encourage him to do some stuff. He's going to take us on a pipe organ tour. We've decided to do a pipe organ tour. So probably in a month or so, we're going to come back here and we're going to do what's called an organ crawl. We're going to show you the blower down in the old boiler room and we're going to show you the piping and the plumbing and the wires and the bells and whistles of a 120 year old church pipe organ. So that's it for now. Thank you very much, Pastor Dale. And thank you, me. Phil. And we look forward to seeing this film. Well, well, we'll have it on probably Thursday, late Thursday, Thursday evening. Uh, Wonderful. That'll be Thursday. That's tomorrow night. Uh, and uh, now we have a new administration going in as we're doing this. So we're going to celebrate the new administration by posting this. I'm going to put it up Thursday evening. So... Right if you get work and hang by your thumbs and God bless you all. Bye bye.